Alright, so today we're having a look at Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, which is a very well known film and helped popularise the sexploitation cannibal genre. Let's have a look. Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals is a 1977 Italian sexploitation film directed by Joe Damanto. Damanto also directed Porno Holocaust and Erotic Nights of the Living Dead, so there's more than likely going to be a lot of sex in this. This film is part of a series called Black Emmanuel, which is an unofficial Italian spin-off of the Emmanuel character, who was a popular French softcore porn character. Many of the films in this series were directed by Demanto, including Emmanuel Around the World and Emmanuel and the White Slave Trade, to name a few. All Black Emmanuel films star Laura Gemza as a title character. So the film begins in an insane asylum in New York, and a nurse gets her breast bitten off by an inmate. Emmanuel is an undercover reporter in the hospital, and later that night she goes to talk to the assailant who is restrained to a bed. She teases her, and notices a symbol above her groin which she takes pictures of with a creepy doll camera. She goes to talk to her boss, and says that the symbol is that of a cannibalistic tribe thought to be extinct. She meets with Professor Mark Lester to ask more questions, as she's wanting to do an article on this for her paper. He subtly invites her back to his place, and shows her some footage of a cannibalistic ritual. They discuss cannibalism, and he eventually agrees to front an expedition. Emmanuel meets with her boyfriend Peter, yes another Peter, and shares sex with him under a bridge. The next day she meets with Mark, and he goes to contact his friend Wilkes, who they will be meeting up with in the Amazon. We get cuts between Mark contacting his friend, and Emmanuel and him having sex. Not sure if she's imagining it, or if it's actually happening. They fly out to the Amazon, we get some nice scenery shots, and they land and meet with Wilkes. We also meet Isabel, Wilkes' daughter, and sister Angela. They arrange to meet Father Moranis, who is deep in the Amazon with a missionary. Isabel and Sister Angela are to go with them, as well as two guides, to kill off no doubt. That night, Emmanuel and Mark have sex, while Isabel watches and masturbates. The next morning they set off. Isabel and Emmanuel wash each other, while a chimp watches and smokes a cigarette. Oh look, an ape! <laughs> no, it's a chimp. They decide to set up camp when a snake attacks Emmanuel but he gets shot in the head and, no way, it's Dr. O'Briero. Watch out, people. But really in this film, O'Brien is playing Donald McKenzie, who I think might be a hunter. What are you doing here in the jungle? Ah, uh, hunting. Hunting is my life. I've sacrificed a lot to follow my craving for hunting. Not sure, though. So apparently the savages attacked the missionary and killed everyone, including Father Moranis. Mackenzie invites them to camp with him and his wife, Maggie, but it seems that someone is watching from the bushes. Maggie masturbates over one of the guides, and then takes him over to have sex with him deep in the jungle. Mackenzie wakes up and notices Maggie is missing, so he goes over to find her, and watches her have sex. Then he heads back and pervs on Isabel. The team decide to head back to the base to keep out of danger, but Mackenzie doesn't want to go, it seems he and Maggie have ulterior motives. They agree to travel with them for a while anyway, and the team set off. They find a dead guy on a beach, along with a bible and a blanket. I assume this is supposed to be Father Moranis. And after a lot of walking, they rest. Mackenzie pervs on Isabel again, and she wakes up screaming. Mark and Mackenzie tussle, and then go back to doing what they were doing before. Okay. Sister Angela goes for a piss, but disappears, so the team go looking for her. One of the guides dies on some spikes, and Sister Angela gets tied up to a tree and eaten by some cannibals. They set up another camp, and in the morning, Mackenzie and Maggie sneak off. It turns out they were looking for a crashed plane that was part of an expedition they were on to find diamonds. They find the case of diamonds and have sex, but the cannibals attack again. They kidnap Maggie and leave Mackenzie wounded. The team find Mackenzie and plan an attack on the tribe, so Mark and Emmanuel go round one way and get to a high point where they can see the tribe starting their ritual with Maggie in a cage. Mackenzie, Salvador the Guide, and Isabel go the other way, but are caught. Salvador is killed, Isabel is drugged, and Mackenzie is captured. They tie up Maggie, kill her, and eat her genitals. They then tie up Mackenzie and, well, <laughs> just watch. Loving the effects. Anyway, they rape Isabel and are about to sacrifice her to the water god. All this time, Emmanuel and Mark have just been watching, but finally they decide to make a plan. 
Emmanuel paints the tribe symbol on herself, quite impressively, and gets in the water. Mark fires a flare, which draws the tribe's attention, and Emmanuel walks out of the water pretending to be the water god, takes Isabel from the tribe and swims away with her. The tribe catches on and a chase ensues, but what's left of the team escapes. We get a terribly acted speech. Manolo, Felipe, Salvador lost their lives because they followed us on this mad adventure, and for what? That I'd like to know. And then the film ends. I thought the film was quite enjoyable. It did get a little dull in the middle, lots of walking, but the beginning and ending were pretty good. It is quite heavy on the sex, but the scenes are short enough to not completely overstay their welcome or get in the way of the story. The violence is quite sparse as well, but the effects were decent. There's a lot of nice and interesting shots throughout, which make it a joy to look at, and the music is a real highlight, done again by Nico Fedenko, and really suits the film. The acting and dubbing can be pretty bad. Here are a few examples. If it's found out that you are a journalist, can you imagine the scandal will break out? Don't you understand that? It isn't worthwhile. Leaving all your work at the museum. <laughs> or maybe you're past the age for this sort of thing. <laughs> no, Peter, we can't. Tomorrow I'm leaving for the Amazon for work. Something very, very interesting. It's about cannibals. Emmanuel, you're crazy. You're really, really crazy. Maybe I am. But right now I want to make love. So, on to the release. This is another good example. The aspect ratio is fine and the print is clean. The audio is really good as well. Very easy to watch. The film does just start though. It's another one where you have to wait until the end of the film to access the menu, as pressing the menu button just restarts the film. The cover's quite good for this one as well. Again, the description is to the point. Although, we do have a spelling error. I guess A is quite close to S on a keyboard, but still. And also, I think they tried to fix Filmography, but they just fucked up again. This time it's Filmography. I struggle to understand how they did this, really. The runtime is pretty close. The film comes in at 87 minutes. This is a cut version of the film with just under two minutes cut out, including a nipple being cut off and a scene of rape. Special features time. And this is pretty decent. We have lots of galleries, including VHS art, posters, advertising stills, lobby cards, and the soundtrack sleeve. And we also get the standard filmographies. But we also get the entire soundtrack, which is a really nice feature to have. Because as I said previously, the soundtrack is quite nice, and a CD version can be quite pricey. It's something to pop on while washing the pots, or dancing around the living room naked. And we also get a trailer, which is okay, serviceable and not too long. Overall then, I'd say that this is pretty good. The film's quite fun and the release is quite impressive with the inclusion of the soundtrack. Now, I do also own this on Blu-ray, and this is the uncut version, and it also includes the uh, original Italian audio with English subtitles, which is quite a nice feature. But as I've said before, if you see this one knocking around for cheap, it's well worth checking out. Overall, I'd recommend this.